Hey, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about Supermicro X9 DRI-F motherboard and specifically the chassis that it's inside, the CSE836. Let's get started. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by to learn a little bit more about the Supermicro X9 DRI-F. If you find anything useful in today's video, do us a favor and click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get started. Uh, first things first, uh, this is an extended ATX motherboard. Uh, there are two CPUs, which is an LGA 2011 socket. It takes the uh, Intel Xeon E5 2600V1 or V2 series CPU. Uh, as far as the uh, memory is concerned, it accepts DDR3 memory. There are 16 DIMM slots. It takes a number of different speeds, as low as 1066, 1333, 1600, or up to 1866. I will note, however, if you use the 1866, it will clock back down to 1600. So I always tell people that in advance. So if you're buying memory and it uh, costs extra for the 1866, there's no point in doing it. If you have 186 laying around, yes, you can put it in and it will work. It'll just clock down. So um, as far as the uh, sizes are concerned, you can go as low as uh, 1 gig, 2 gig, 4 gig, 8 gig. Uh, 16 gig, 32 gig, or all the way up to 64 gig as long as you're using load reduced memory. Which brings us to our next point, what are the different types of RAM that you can use? You can use ECC registered, which is also known as an RDIM, or you can use load reduced memory, also known as an LRDIM. With ECC registered, the max that you can get is 512 gigabytes using 16 32 gigs at 1600 megahertz. However, with load reduced, you actually get double the capacity and you can get um, one terabyte using 1664 gigs, again at 1600 megahertz. Uh, okay, now that we know a little bit more about the machine itself, um, or I'm sorry, now that we know a little bit more about the memory itself, um, I want to show you about the, uh, the channels inside, how to uh, properly load it and configure it. But before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear. Really, you never want to be inside a machine without ESD gear. You always have the potential to shock it and damage it. So I'm going to grab my gear and I'll be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear, on, we are safe to open the machine and prevent it from electrostatic discharge. First things first, just going to push these two tabs down, slide it back, pop the, the top open. Very, very simple. All right, uh, you will notice that uh, there is an air baffle uh, that basically is preventing entry to uh, the CPUs into the memory modules. So the first things first is we're actually going to have to remove these two fans back here. So there's a little tab right here, just going to slide it over and lift straight up. And you'll notice on these, there's actually a connector down here, so you don't have to actually worry about uh, any cables when you're pulling these out, which is nice uh, because, like I said, there's a little connector down there. So uh, once we've removed the two fans, you can now uh, pull the uh, air baffle up. And it is a little snug. Oops, there we go. Uh, so now that we've got the air baffle up, we have access. Okay, so this is CPU 1, and CPU 1 controls the eight DIMM slots over here. This is CPU 2, and CPU 2 controls the eight DIMM slots back here. Um, if you look deep in here, which you won't be able to see on the camera, everything is actually labeled, which is very helpful. Uh, so as far as um, uh, the actual channels are concerned, uh, you'll notice that there are, as we said, eight DIMM slots per CPU, which means there are four memory channels per CPU and there are two DIMM slots per memory channel. And this is really important because with uh, uh, DDR3 ECC registered, um, you would run into the rank rule if it was three DIMMs per uh, memory channel, which a lot of, um, of the, the HP and Dells that are uh, compatible with this uh, from this uh, general generation run into that issue. Luckily with Supermicro, uh, they had some foresight and they uh, made the bulk of their machines uh, two DIMMs per channel. There are some exceptions to that rule, don't get me wrong, uh, but most of them seem to be two DIMMs per channel. So anyhow, the uh, first channel is over here. This is A1. The next channel is B1. So you'll notice that the blue slots are the start of the channel. Over here, this is C1 and then D1. So what's important about this is let's say you only had one CPU inside and you were only putting in four DIMM slots. You'd want to put them into the four blue DIMM slots. And in general, if you're not maxing it out, you always want to put your modules at the start of the memory channel. People say, why would you want to do that? Well, it's really simple. You want to maximize your overall performance and you don't want to have one channel doing all the work and other channels doing nothing. So you want to have a nice even distribution of your load across all 
all the memory channels. So it, it's really just about performance, okay? Um, and then if you come down over here, uh, same thing, you're gonna have uh, E1, F1, G1, H1. So all the blue uh, tabs are the, or all the blue slots are the uh, the start of the memory channel. So if you had two CPUs and you were putting in eight DIMMs, you want to put them in all the blue. So I know I sound like a broken record and I'm saying it over and over, but the start of the channel is the way that you want to install it. That's just the best way to maximize the performance of your machine. Okay. Um, so what we actually have here are some very expensive 64 gig uh, DDR3 LR DIMMs um, that we're going to use to max this machine out and actually put in a uh, one terabyte before we send it off to our customer. But before we get going and installing them, I wanted to note, you will see right here there is a notch in the middle of the memory module also known as a key. This key is very important because when you insert the module, you'll notice the key is not perfectly in the center. So if you have it uh, misaligned, you could potentially damage the DIMM, uh, hurting the, um, the leads, or even worse, you could damage the motherboard, which means you might have to replace the motherboard because if you've tried to shove it in, uh, there's a little plastic notch uh, inside of the, the uh, DIMM so uh, socket, and if you were to break that, you could break the DIMM socket, uh, rendering it useless, which then at that point, a lot of times you're just going to have to either skip over it or replace the motherboard. Again, nothing that, that you, not situations you want to run into. So um, as far as just aligning it properly for us, it's going to be like this. And I will note, it does flip-flop. So when I go um, over to uh, this side of the CPU, it's actually a different way. So this is very, very important, and it's uh, really common as well for it to go back and forth, um, but it's something I always tell people to watch out for. So uh, next thing you'll notice, I've put the module down. It's, it's uh, in the socket, but it's not really in the socket because it's not properly seated. And a very common user error that we run into all the time is someone thinks that they have a bad DIMM, and really the DIMM is not fully seated. And it's a really common user error. I tell people all the time, I don't care if you've been doing this 20 years and you, you've been a technician for a long time or this is your first day on the job. We all do it. We've all made this mistake. So just make sure you hear these two clicks right here. You're going to make sure it's fully inserted. Click one. Click two. So what that did is it made sure on the side here that the, uh, the the tabs grab these notches and physically pull the leads into the socket. And actually, this is another point that I was about to do. I always tell people it's a nice tip is to uh, make sure all of your uh, tabs are fully open. I went to go install that right there and the tabs would have actually been preventing me to uh, install it and just little things like that. You don't want to do that while you have uh, a memory module um, in your hand and you, you might potentially drop it. Uh, all these are just you know little little tips that I recommend just to make your life easier and prevent any potential user error because we all make mistakes and none of us are perfect, right? So that being said, you just want to take a little bit of time and a little bit of precaution to make sure you do it right and prevent any errors, okay? So now that we got this first side done, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward, but I do want to note again, you need to flip it as far as the direction over here on this side. And just like that, we've installed one terabyte of RAM. Uh, this machine is going to get a huge boost in performance. Uh, when it originally came in, it, it only had 128 gigabytes total. So you can imagine going from 128 to 1 terabyte. Uh, it, I mean, it's just going to be a, a huge, huge boost. Um, and that's one of the things that, that we always tell customers. Um, if uh, you, so the, the X9 is really not that old. Um, I understand X12s are coming out. Um, X11s are already out right now. Um, X13s are around the corner. Um, you know, I, I get all that. Uh, there's a lot of really great systems that are coming out, but they're expensive. And so um, if this is doing everything that you need it to do, but maybe just a, a little bit slow for whatever application you're using it for, the best Band-Aid and what we always recommend is upgrading the RAM. Just a quick upgrade to the RAM. Um, it'll cost a couple hundred bucks. Um, but a, a new system will cost, you know, sometimes tens of thousands, and then you have to uh, have someone come out, install it, um, you know, remap everything. It, 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 it's a, a lot that goes into getting a new server. So personally, uh, I'm a big fan of upgrading what you have um, as long as you can make it work. Of course, if it's time, it's time. But if you're, if you're ready to just uh, continue to use this, 
I always say it, man, upgrade the RAM. That's that's the way to go. You'll you'll just get such a big boost. So anyhow, now we're gonna put it back together. We're gonna uh, drop the uh, air baffle in. Okay. And then we're going to put the uh, fan modules back in, and they're just going to slide and click into place. And just like that, I mean, it really took no time whatsoever, and, and we were able to, to get a huge boost here. Uh, if you've made it this far in the video, hey, do us a favor, click that like and smash that subscribe. And if you're looking for any upgrades for your X9 DRI-F, do us a favor, email us at sales at cloudengine.com, sales at cloudengine.com. We got really everything under the sun for this machine, 8 gigs, 16 gigs, 32 gigs, or 34 gig, or sorry, 64 gigs, which we just installed, and we'd love to help you out. So just like I said, email us at sales at cloudengine.com or uh, hit the phone down below. Thanks for stopping by and have a great day.